Good day to all of the grade 11 tourism learners. This is your first official grade 11 tourism lesson for 2021. We will discuss the transport services in South Africa today, focusing on air transport. So we are going to do some quite a lot of um, terminology or concepts. These are all the, of the concepts that we are going to discuss now. Um, you can just fill your worksheet as we go along. So a gateway is a place of entry into a country or into a region. So um, in, in this, um, this chapter of air travel, we will mostly focus on international airports or just national airports in South Africa. Here's a map to um, show you where all the airports are located in South Africa. Your teacher will go along um, the map with you um, in regards to the different types of airports that we do have in South Africa. So now we're going to look at direction. So our first type of flight regarding direction is inbound flights. Thus, um, it's when any flight enters a country um, in regards to an airport. So it's a flight from one country to another country entering or arriving at the airport. Then we have outbound flights. This is where flights depart from South Africa. They leave the airport to go somewhere else. Then the next one is where do I fly to? Now the first one is a domestic flight. Now a domestic flight, as you can see in my map here on the on the slide, is when a, a, um, a airplane departs from a province to another province or from an airport to another airport, but stays in the international borders of South Africa. So it's flying from one airport to another airport, but stays in the same country. Then we have domestic flights, um, still um, as we discussed in the previous slide, but now we have two different types of domestic flights. The one is interprovincial and the other one is intraprovincial. Interprovincial goes um, of the, this flight goes from one province to another province. As my example in um, the slide here at, at the one side, from Western Cape to Limpopo, that's an interprovincial flight. But when the, the flight is only staying in one province, we speak about intraprovincial flights. Here's an example um, of a map which indicates um, domestic flights and a teacher might give you a sketch like this or a map like this and indicate a specific flight route and ask you to identify one of these routes. Then we have our regional flights. In grade 10, you already discussed some of our SADC countries. So this is a flight between any of these 16 countries. So you can see in the map, it is all the green shaded parts that's part of our SADC um, countries list. And please remember that the Camorra Islands is um, on this list as well now. No, there's not 15 anymore, but 16 in total. Then we come to intercontinental flights. So the word inter means various or um, different kinds of. So if we only have a look at the, at the heading above, inter means different, continental, intercontinental, different continents. So this is a flight between two continents where a, a flight goes from one continent to another. Then we have transcontinental flights. Now this is when we fly across a continent, like in this um, map below. So this might also include a flight from um, South Africa and that um, arrives at Egypt on top of the African continent. So this flight means we also fly across the African continent. Transatlantic flights, this means a flight um, goes from one country to another country 
while it crosses the North Atlantic Ocean, not only the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean is this whole part here on the map, but transatlantic flights is only crossing the North Atlantic Ocean. Then we have our type of flights. Connecting flights is when we have um, our, where we, where we um, depart from to where we want to go and there's no direct flight between these two parts. So what happens is if you depart from some place, you fly, you um, wait at a specific point and then you depart again from that place to your final destination. This is also usually cheaper flights and where there's no direct routes um, available. Then we have our duration of our flights. Now, our duration of our flights, I'm not going to focus on this as your teacher will do it yourself or himself, but um, you can only know the long haul flights. And then we have our medium haul flights and lastly, our short haul flights. Most or all of the flights in South Africa is classified as short haul flights um, because none of them um, is longer than three hours. Then we have chartered flights. Now, chartered flights is flights where no specific roster um, is followed through that um, airport or that um, type of aircraft offering a service to tourists. So it's non-scheduled and it's mostly for special people with special um, requests such as our president or um, very rich people. Then we have our airports. We have an international airport um, which handles all international flights arriving and departing from one country to another. Now, two terms that you have to know about is the immigration control and customs officials. Now, these two um, facilities at international airports is compulsory um, for them to um, have a look at different kinds of stuff of the tourists. Now, our Im immigration control checks our documentation, such as our passports, visas, and other, um, other documentation, which might include maybe your health certificates, etc. Then we have our customs. Now, customs has a look at tourists' um, baggage, baggage or then the goods they are, they are taking with them on their flight. Now, international airports, mostly in South Africa, are run by the airports company of South Africa, which logo is here at the bottom. Um, now, all the, uh, the airports in South Africa that is operated by the government of the country is run by or are run um, through AXA. So AXA means airports company of South Africa. There's the logo in full for you as well. Okay, so um, that has specific requirements to our different airports and they check these types of facilities and if all is in order um, or not. Then we have private, uh, privately owned airports. The best example or the most known example is Lanseria International Airport. Um, please notice that it is also an international airport. Most of you always think Lanseria is only a national airport, but it is not run and operated by our government. Private landing strips is usually located in our game reserves or um, close to um, our coastal resorts and, or, or um, any place that does not really have any facilities as an airport, but it has only an open area where small aircrafts can um, depart and arrive. It's usually also not a tarred um, landing strip, as you can see in the picture above.